Blue Origin had to once again scrub the launch of its new Glenn rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on November 12th. The first time they scrubbed was back on November 9th when there was poor weather at the pad, which of course does happen. The reason they scrubbed though on the 12th was a bit more interesting. In its official update, Blue Origin says they stood down, quote, due to highly elevated solar activity and its potential impacts on the Escapade spacecraft. Those who were up the previous night may have observed some stunning views of the Northern Lights in the Northern Hemisphere, like this picture shared by the National Weather Service. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, says the Aurora's wide visibility was driven by a pair of coronal mass ejections, CMEs for short, that emanated from the sun. The event was notable enough for the center's space weather prediction coordinator to give two video updates on the impacts of these geomagnetic storms overnight. We have already had two of three antip anticipated coronal mass ejections arrive here at Earth. A coronal mass ejection, or CME for short, is a blast of solar material, uh, charged particles, and a very strong localized magnetic field that stretches out into space from the sun. As I said, two of these have already arrived and they packed quite a punch. Noah says that raised the threat level to G4 severe on a five point scale ranging from minor to extreme. If the term CME sounds kind of familiar, it might be because back in October, NASA and NOAA launched a new spacecraft called the Space Weather Follow-On Lagrange 1 or SWIFO L1 spacecraft. It's heading out about a million miles away from Earth and it's designed to replace some of the legacy spacecraft out there, which weren't designed to do the same kind of robust space weather alerts. When a uh, event comes off the sun, a coronal mass ejection, uh, depending on how fast it is, uh, and of course the track, uh, whether it's coming towards the Earth, it could be uh, a super fast one is 12 hours, more typical is, is two to three days. So we get a couple days warning, but we don't actually know how strong that storm is until we see it at the Lagrange point one. That's uh, only a million miles from Earth. A million miles is a far, far distance, but remember the, the sun is 93 million miles from Earth. So at these speeds, what that means is we have about 15 to uh, 45 minute warning of exactly how strong that is. SWIFO L1 won't be calibrated in, in full use until spring 2026 but NOAA's current fleet of spacecraft are still able to give analysts a good understanding of what we're facing right now. Uh, the overall strength of the magnetic field from this CME, which is an important key, is not only eight times stronger than what's normal, but is also favorable at the moment for continued activity. Dahl said in his roughly 4 a.m. update on November 12th that they expected there to be at least G3 strong levels of impact to the Earth, through at least 4 p.m. in the afternoon that day. As I'm recording this video, it's about 4.30 in the afternoon, which is roughly three-ish hours from when the third and final CME was expected to arrive. It's also near the back end of when Blue Origin was supposed to launch its new Glenn rocket with NASA's escapade mission on board. Dahl says among the various players that it informed about these potential impacts from the CMEs were, of course, the launch teams. So impacts wise, if you use precision GPS systems, there could be degradation on that. If you need to be accurate in less than an inch, it could be off by much more than that as this type of activity continues. We've been communicating with space launch officials because of a pending launch coming up. That may not happen because of this activity, but that will be for the decision makers to make. We've been talking to some state watch centers, FEMA, even the highest levels of our government at the White House to inform them about this type of activity because these can impact the electric power grid of our country, the bulk electric system. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center forecast November 13th to have a peak of G4 activity with things coming down to G1 minor by November 14th and no threat warning by the weekend. As of the afternoon of November 12th, United Launch Alliance was pressing forward with its plan to launch the Atlas V rocket on the night of November 13th. It's planning to launch the Viasat 3 Flight 2 spacecraft during a launch window that opens at 10.04 p.m. Eastern. Launch weather officers at the 45th Weather Squadron forecast a high risk for impacts from solar activity, though, stating that there's a good chance for impacts from X-ray flares and proton flux. However, in a statement to Spaceflight Now on Wednesday, a ULA spokesperson said, quote, The SLD-45 launch weather officers are closely monitoring solar activity 
and we are monitoring the downward trend and forecast for it to be within acceptable levels for a launch tomorrow night. We plan to reevaluate the solar weather conditions prior to the start of our countdown and make a determination prior to fueling the vehicle. And with a pair of Falcon 9 rocket launches also potentially facing solar activity impacts Friday night, time will tell when the weather, space or otherwise, will allow all these missions stacking up to proceed. Reporting for Space Flight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.